Hello, I'm Ivan Vankov and in this video I will try to explain what channels are because it's a fundamental concept inside Hyperledger Fabric and as far as I know there is no analogy with other blockchain uh, systems. So what channels are? Their uh, main way for data isolation. So the channel, you can think for the channel as a completely separate instance of Hyperledger Fabric. So every channel is completely independent. One channel do not depend on another channel, they never exchange data. Every channel has a different set of rules, policies, chain codes that are completely independent. So, for example, imagine that uh, there are three parties. So, party A, party B and party C. All of three uh, have some process and they are inside one channel. The three parties are inside this channel. So, all of these three parties can um, execute operations, see the data, but for some reason, party A want to communicate with party B in a such a way that party C is not able to see that uh, communication. So party A and party B create a separate channel and only they are part of that channel. There is no technical way for party C to, un to even see that they have a channel between each other and to see the information inside this channel. So, by creating a channel, you isolate who can see the data and with policy, you can uh, actually control later who can uh, execute uh, operation inside the channel. So, this is the basic idea. So, when you build the network in general, you have peers. Okay, uh, you have a couple of peers. But these peers by themselves are not able to do anything. They must be part of a channel, at least one channel. So, uh, you have a ledger. Uh, you have a blockchain and you can start uh, adding data, um, taking data, etc. So, when you uh, create the peer, then you have to join this particular peer to a particular channel. It's a simple operation, the tools are uh, inside the SDK, uh, so it's a, in general a trivial process. But you have to understand that all the parties that are inside the channel must agree for all other parties. So it's not uh, like uh, there is a channel, oh, I will join it without acceptance of the other parties. No, no, no. Every single party that is inside the channel must be agree for every other party because the channels are secure. They isolated. You have a private data inside. You have really important data. It's not possible just some random uh, peer from somewhere just to join the channel and start reading the data. All the parties must be agreed for all other parties. And of course, you can add many peers to the same channel. That's the main idea. And uh, <laughs> in such a way, you can make a proper endorsement, you can uh, scale the query operations, not only the query operations, all the operations, etc., uh, etc. Et so the channel is completely isolated. You can dynamically add, uh, as I mentioned, uh, additional peers to a channel or additional groups or members to the channel. So for example, uh, a and B uh, have that channel, uh, they work, let's say, a year, and at some point uh, their business logic require a third party, let's say party C, to enter in that channel and to have uh, the information for all the um, data that is inside the channel. It's possible in runtime, actually, with a couple of updates, to uh, allow uh, another member, another party, another organization to enter in the channel. And of course, you can remove uh, uh, parties from the channel. So this is the main idea of the channel. So the technical details are uh, uh, sometimes they may be a little difficult, especially uh, when you want to update the channel configuration. Uh, and the problem is that the tools for that are not uh, are not user friendly. You have all the tools, you have everything necessary, but uh, you have to spend a little bit uh, time to understand the proper configuration inside the and the, the channel configuration, how to create the update. This will be uh, improved in later versions. Uh, they will make the tools much more f uh, user friendly or uh, much more easier for automation. But um, this will be fixed after a couple of months, I'm pretty sure. Uh, they are tasking the Jira for improving that. So this is the main idea of the channel. Pretty simple, as you see, but really, really powerful. So uh, just to go a little bit more technical, uh, before actually joining the channel, 
you have to create the channel and the channel is created uh, by using a, a specific tool that is provided by Hyper Hyperledger Fabric and you can read really technical detail details but uh, the main idea is that inside the channel inside this configuration block of the channel the first block of the channel uh, you have data for uh, all the parties that are allowed to be in that channel so only parties that are inside this config will uh, be able to enter that channel and later if you want to add another party you have to update this configuration block and there are uh, actually uh, different uh, tutorials actually how you can do that uh, as i mentioned it's not a trivial process but it's not so difficult when you uh, got the, the the details you'll be able to do that and even to automate it with shell scripts or some other uh, language so that's the main idea of the channel and again one peer may be in many channels this is really important to understand you may have one peer that is part of 10 completely different channels but uh, every channel is independent you, you don't mix data and also inside your network you may have let's say three peers and the first peer is part of 10 channels the second peer is part of five channels the other peer is par part of 20 channels uh, you have the flexibility to configure your network as much as you want, depending on uh, throughput requirements, security requirements, etc. You can manage them as much as you want. Uh, again, Hyperledger do not enforce particular uh, um, flow, particular setup, particular configuration, etc. It depending on your needs because. As I mentioned a couple of times, Hyperledger is built by many, many different industri industries with uh, completely different workloads and business requirements. So they decide, okay, let's not enforce anything. These companies are clever enough to know uh, what is working best for them. Let's just allow them to com configure the system uh, to fit their needs. They are technically good enough to actually configure it and make it pro work properly. So this is, for, uh, this is enough for this video. Uh, in the next video, I will try to explain uh, what uh, chain code is and how chain code and policies are related to a channel. Thank you.